How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm gonna give you an update on the Young v. Hawaii case. This is a challenge to uh, Hawaii's law which prohibits individuals from concealed carrying as well as open carrying, specifically a challenge to open carry in Hawaii. This is in the Ninth Circuit. It's been heard by an en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit and we're waiting for a decision. So this is gonna be a video update on some additional information we got. One thing I wanna mention before we jump into this video is that we are rapidly approaching the 100,000 subscriber mark here on this channel. First and foremost, I wanna thank everybody who subscribed to this channel, who supports this channel. I cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've shown me. It wouldn't be possible without you guys and I wouldn't do this without all of you. Also, I wanna mention if you guys are not subscribed, if you've watched a few of these videos and you find value in what I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I also wanna mention that you might wanna double check to make sure you are still subscribed because I've had reports that individuals have been unsubscribed by YouTube. So just keep an eye on that as well. So with all that being said, let's jump into Young v. Hawaii. So first and foremost, I've done videos on Young v. Hawaii before. And if you're looking for a more comprehensive like breakdown of all of this case, you can click this tab right there and it will take you to some videos I have on Young v. Hawaii, which are more comprehensive. So a quick summary of Young v. Hawaii to kind of catch everybody up. This is a case arising out of the state of Hawaii and it is a challenge to Hawaii's statutory language, which prohibits individuals from concealed carrying firearms as well as um, carrying openly in the state of Hawaii. And there are some various things that also have happened. For example, the county of Hawaii has additional regulations, which pretty much make it impossible not only for people to get concealed weapons in that area, but as well, almost impossible for people to get open carry permits. And the only exception for that is, is if someone can prove that they are carrying that firearm in the course of their business or in the course of their employment, like a law enforcement officer, security guard, something like that. And this all arises out of the language in Hawaii's revised statute 134-9. Essentially what Mr. Young argued is that 134-9 with its various requirements that there must be exceptional cases and that someone must be protecting their life and property, it made it almost next to impossible for someone to actually get their hands on one of these permits. And the statistics actually showed that almost no one had ever been actually granted one of these permits. Now this case was heard in a district court in Hawaii and eventually was dismissed. Then it was actually elevated to the Ninth Circuit and a three judge panel heard this case. The three judge panel heard this case in 2018 and actually ruled in favor of Mr. Young. They found that this revised statute 134-9 did in fact violate constitutional second amendment rights because individuals have a fundamental right to carry openly in public. Now, one of the things they didn't address in the three judge panel was this issue of concealed carry that was also kind of at issue because the Ninth Circuit has already ruled on this issue in the Peruta case, essentially saying that no one has a fundamental right to concealed carry a firearm. So they already had that Ninth Circuit precedent, but in Peruta, they had never addressed this issue of open carry but the three judge panel here in Young said that individuals do have a right to open carry. What then happened is essentially it was appealed up to the full en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit. And the en banc panel heard this actually last year, September 24th of 2020. And since the Ninth Circuit heard this case in September, there's been almost no movement in this case, but a lot of you have been asking me for updates. We did get some additional information and it came from a, a supplemental essentially filing that the uh, representative Mr. Young filed and it was a letter to the court and it was also an attachment of an article and it had to do with some issues about whether or not an individual under the Second Amendment has a fundamental right again to open carry. And if you remember the three judge panels ruling, this case was deeply rooted in a lot of history, text, practice. Um, this was a deep dive into the historical context of the Second Amendment. And this has also been present as well in the full en banc hearing as well. So it's no surprise that there's been additional support being submitted on this issue of historical context. Mr. Young's representative is using this article as additional support for some varying things. And it comes down to, there was some discussion about surety laws and about some existing early um, statutes that may have limited individuals' rights to open carry farms. And so Mr. Young's representative is using this article as essentially a way to contest those arguments that were presented by the government. Now I will attach down in the details section if you wanna read this article for yourself. It's actually a very interesting read. It's a little bit dense because again, like I mentioned, it goes a lot into history of the second amendment, but it's good for those of you who really wanna deep dive into some of these things. Now the discussion a lot in the article and in the letters back and forth from the government and Mr. Young's representative had to do with this issue of surety laws and it was also raised a little bit in arguments as well. 
it all boils down to whether or not the statutory requirements early on, some statutory requirements that existed, um, were in fact in, an indication that individuals did not have a right to open carry under the Second Amendment. What this article is presenting and why Mr. Young's representative is putting forward this article is on the basis that just because there were surety laws and surety laws, I guess, as a quick, just boiled down simplified version is people putting up money um, as a basis or a bond for them keeping the peace. So they had to put up money or the statute said they had to put up money um, to keep the peace if they were going to carry a weapon out in public. Um, the government is saying that this is an indication that the second amendment doesn't care, cover your right to keep and bear arms openly because there are restrictions on it. But this article is saying that although there were surety laws in some states, um, not all states, there were some surety laws in some states, in practical application, almost no area actually enforced these. So the reality was that although there may have been some surety laws in this type, it was never enforced. Also, what was put forward is that in the antebellum South, there were no surety laws at all. And the government tries to rationalize this away by saying that individuals in the South and governments in the South were much more lenient when it came to firearms and um, people having firearms and things like that. So they try to rationalize that away. But Mr. Young's representative is putting this article forward and saying, yeah, so there were no surety laws in the South. You're saying there were some surety laws um, in some other states, but they were never enforced. Now, another thing that arose out of these letters had to do with an as-applied challenge. The state actually says, or the government representative here is saying that Mr. Young did not preserve his as-applied challenge up to the Ninth Circuit. And this was a discussion that actually popped up at various levels of the three judge panel arguments, as well as in the full en banc oral argument. Now, as a quick breakdown of what a as applied challenge is versus a facial challenge. So in a quick summary, what a facial challenge is is saying that the statutory language is always unconstitutional versus an as applied challenge is saying the statutory language as applied to an individual or as applied in the circumstance is unconstitutional in that instance. What the government is saying here is that Mr. Young never preserved his as applied challenge saying that the 134-9 as applied by the County of Hawaii as applied to him in this circumstance and to other individuals was never preserved. And they're saying that he is impermissibly raising or trying to renew his as applied challenge through this letter. Now, whether or not the Ninth Circuit is gonna uh, find on that issue or what they're gonna find on that issue, we will find out. Again, like I mentioned, this whole as applied versus facial challenge issue was raised at various levels. So we're gonna have to see exactly how the Ninth Circuit rules on that aspect as well. When it comes to when the Ninth Circuit uh, full en banc panel will actually rule on this, your guess is as good as mine. We don't really know. Um, like I said, there was some additional movement with these things getting filed, um, but it doesn't seem like the Ninth Circuit is is in any rush to decide these issues. And right now it doesn't seem like a lot of courts are in any rush to decide some of these issues. Now, when it comes to this Ninth Circuit issue, like I've mentioned, this is in the Ninth Circuit. So it has greater implication here in the state of California as well, as well as other states that are under the Ninth Circuit's jurisdiction. So here in the state of California, we're definitely keeping our eyes on this case because this is an issue of open carry and open a door for a lot of other cases as well. So that's just an update on the Young v. Hawaii case for those of you who are asking me. If you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, also spread the word about things like this that are going on that affect the state of California. Also, I wanna mention if you are looking at concealed carrying or open carrying, if you're in the state of California or maybe if you're not in the state of California and you can open carry, I would highly recommend you look into things like USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. They just give you that extra layer of protection, training, education. I highly recommend them. And like I said, I'll put a link to them down in the details section so you can take a look at them for yourself. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars. This nation will be maintained by armed scholars.